Okay, we'll call this meeting to order. If Mr. Robinson uh, comes, he can take over if he wishes. Um, would Ashley, are you going to call the roll? Yeah, I will. Okay. Okay. Hey, um, Mike Davidson. Here. Tom Duett. Here. Preston Elkins. Here. Steve okay. is absent as well as uh, Oscar. Right. Okay. Chris, do we have anybody else attending Zoom besides Ashley? Okay. Yeah, it looks like there's Calvin. How's it going, Calvin? I'm doing good. Thank you. Uh, and uh, so we didn't actually have any minutes from September 3rd uh, due to no sound. So we won't be approving any minutes. And the last meeting, we didn't have a quorum, so we're not going to worry with the minutes on that one. We have a water and solid waste presentation with uh, Calvin and is somebody joining joining Calvin? Is it? Uh, yes, I have Naya from my end. Uh, she's joining right now. Here she comes. Okay. <clears throat> we will give you guys the floor. All right, thank you. So I'm gonna get Naya to share her screen in a minute just to give us a, a brief overview. So um, we've been working with the city now for a number of months on um, understanding the uh, the utilities in your water, wastewater, and solid waste, um, as well as uh, just looking at the long-term sustainability of these utilities and and the delivery of these essential services. So uh, we've been anticipating costs, looking beyond the current budget into the future in terms of cost and capital. Uh, infrastructure needs, as well as revenues and where the kind of delta between those are and uh, exploring some options. Um, so we've been working with Ashley as well as some others on the team um, to kind of understand what potential options may be out there. So some of these, uh, some of these models that Naya is going to be showing you today includes some assumptions for the future, which we'll go over and make sure everyone's uh, in agreement on. And then looking at the uh, at, at the end, looking at uh, the effect on potential rates uh, and rate adjustments that may be needed. So with that, I'll let Naya take the floor. Hi, everyone. Sorry, I was a couple minutes late. I was sitting in the room Zoom call in the wrong Zoom call, um, but I'm here now. Uh, it's nice to be here with you all. And. Oh, someone just start. OK, here we go. I'll share my screen. Um, if nobody has a preference, I think we'll start with our solid waste fund, um, just because I think that's the most simple one. So we've got it all here in Waterworth. Um, but I think what might be easier to follow along with is this little presentation that I made. It sort of narrows down each um, section into like a nice pretty slide. So I can go through this. But if we have questions, uh, everything is in Waterworth and we can look at that later on. So this is our solid waste model, and we'll start by looking at our operating expenses. So this is the last couple of years, we've got real historic data. And then for the future years, we project uh, operating expenses with about 3% inflation. Um, we've got our capital expenses, and this here, the big spike is our transfer station, and we've got that set in 2028. Um, and then we've got a few new garbage truck purchases in 2026, 2029, and 2032. Um, and with that, we've got all of our operating expenses and capital expenses. For revenues, we have your collection fees, other operating and non-operating revenues, and then some grants. So what we've done is we've assumed grants for the design of the transfer station and then the construction of the transfer station. So in 2026 and 2028, that's what those blue bars of revenue are. 
Well, if we look at those combined, we've got our expenses versus our revenues. And you can see for the current years, the revenues have been a little higher than the expenses, uh, or sorry, for the past years. Our current years are actually not quite meeting. And then same thing with our future years looking out. Uh, if we don't change our rates, this is what the future for our expenses versus our revenues look like. And that causes our cash line to drop drastically um, below zero in 2027. So we can look at that all together. Um, our proposed solution to keep the rates sort of where they need to be to keep our revenues up and keep them at or above our, our expenses, operating and capital, is a 12% increase uh, in January this year, as well as January next year, and then just a 3% increase annually moving forward each year. Uh, and I went through that pretty quick because we have three to show, but if anyone has any questions, um, let me know. Can I ask, uh, how many years of historical data did y'all use? Did we your we used expenses. Yeah, we used 2022, 2023, and 2024 um, year to date and actual numbers. Uh, and then our 2025 is our budget. Okay. And we used. Did we have a specific test year? Was that June 30 or what? What did we have there for 24? Sorry, what was the question? What was our test year to figure out actual expenses? Um, so basically, yeah, it's not just like one year when we look at the actual model and I can show you in detail here, we've got a table of all of your operating expenses from your general ledger. They were pulled out. Um, so you've got the past historic, uh, 2022, 2023, 2024 totals for each year for each line item. And then we have your budget for 2025. And then you can see each line is going up from 2025 with 3% inflation. And then we've got the same thing for your revenues where we had the 2022, 2023, 2024 actuals, and then our 2025 budget moving forward. Uh, we don't budget for inflation for revenues. We just increase your garbage collection rates, um, or as you'll see later on, your, your wastewater and your water rates as well. We just increase those by our... Um, Let's see here, the 12% in 2025 and 2026, and then 3% onward, which is shown right here, 12%, 12%, and then 3% every year. And that gives us a nice cash balance that's growing over time, over the next 10 years or so. Oh, Calvin, you're muted. Uh, yeah, the, so the, uh, essentially what we do, what we're using as a test year is the 2025 budget so so beyond 2025 uh the assumptions are being made with inflation or as well as rates um but that's the that's the last year uh the, the last year of actuals is 2024. Okay. all righty uh, I'll move on to wastewater then. Um, it follows a very similar presentation. Um, and then we can go look at the actual data again later on if you're wanting to do that. But we've got our operating expenses. Same story here where we've got your uh, past year's uh, historic real data and then your budget for 2025 inflating at 3%. Uh, we've got a bit of current debt, and then that's what that flat bar, the the darker blue, and the lighter blue is proposed debt that you'll oops sorry that you'll see. Um, we've got some proposed borrowing for this capital project here, which is a wastewater treatment plant um, that we've got sort of started in 2027. Um, with us, we sort of assume it'll be about 40 million dollars for the total cost of the wastewater treatment plant and about five million for the Q and a half sewer improvement project. And these are numbers that I got from um, Joe and Ashley. So if they need to be tweaked at all, we can do that. Um, but this is what the model is based on currently. And you can see our current and future expenses here. With revenues, 
Um, we've got your sale of sewer service and other operating and non operating revenues. And then you can see the grants and the borrowed funds are these blue and pink columns here. And what we've assumed for this scenario is 60% grant and 40% borrowing for the sewer improvement project and the wastewater treatment plant. And these are what our expenses versus our revenues look like um, with the cash position again falling. And our proposed solution for the wastewater side is a 12% increase annually starting in January 2025. Um, I also wanted to bring up quickly before we move into the water side, um, the, where is that sheet? Here we go. This was your old, um, from 2023 rate schedule, rate increase schedule that I think you adopted the first year, but the second year was not actually adopted. And you'll see that with the, where are we here? Sewer rates. Um, and I'll zoom in a bit so you guys can see this better. With the sewer rates, they were between an eight for the minimum charge, 10% for the lower tier and 12% for the higher tier. Increases are what were scheduled previously. So we're sticking along with that 12% each year. And if we backtrack a little bit to the solid waste, again, 12% each year is what was suggested a couple years back. And that's, again, what we're suggesting based on the data that um, we have worked on with Ashley and Joe. And then the water side here, I will just have a another. Hey, Naya, can I stop you really quick for a question? And yes, it, of course. It may, be a question for you. it may be a question for Joe and Chris. So we're going to have a $40 million uh, wastewater treatment plant improvement starting in 26. Mm -hmm. um, That's new to me. Yeah. Um, I would say let's have Ashley Q in on this and ask if she can speak on that because I'm I'm not sure what the forty thousand or forty million is for, for that. I don't know if that's because that's improvement is mm -hmm. what they're saying, right? There's yeah, it, that's that's about. basically that we do have some it. things that we need to improve on, and it was it's, just an estimation with working with Waterworth. I mean, yeah. sorry, not Waterworth with uh, Wilson and Company, because mm -hmm. of course the Wellfield, I mean the wastewater treatment plant needs. Uh, improvement. So that was just a ballpark number. It's not a set in number. We just gave mm -hmm. that number for an idea because yeah, of course we know the wastewater treatment plant needs a lot of work as I'll far as because we are waiting for a PER. Um, yes. We're not a PER, but uh, yeah, I no, guess it, it, it will be a PER. It'll be a PER for um, yes. Wilson and Company. What does that mean? Uh, a pre preliminary engineering report. Yeah. So we're going to, we're going to wait on that. They're, they're doing the study anyways, the Wilson, Wilson right. and company's doing their study. So we've asked them to kind of conduct a comprehensive report on what they see the wastewater plant can improve on um, to help us get that thing into compliance. Um, so they're looking at several different things. Um, so they're going to start with, with the simplicity of it and then go into more details on what they, what they think could help us down the road. So, and I'm all, I am all for, uh, getting that thing up and running. I mean, we paid for it. Might as well be utilizing it. Absolutely. Uh, I just don't know that we want to build our rates off of a number that's that's somewhat fantasy that we don't really know that's that, what we're going to spend. And that's very understandable, which is kind of the neat thing about Waterworth is that we can go back in once we do get the PER and we can adjust those numbers. Um, and we were just going off of the rates that were already anticipated from uh, right. the prior amendment. So that's what we were going off of. We didn't really change the uh, wastewater or solid waste side. We kept that exactly what it was. What was the original cost of the plant? 25, wasn't it? 27. 27. Plus, plus some grants that got thrown in there as well. So I, I personally, I think it's probably, we might as well put this on the agenda for next public works to have an internal discussion, because I know these folks are just 
presenting on what we have given them mm -hmm. as ideas. So, so let's talk about that. Yeah. Sorry for interrupting that. Yeah. No, that's okay. And I actually want to touch on this really quickly and show you, um, one of the really neat sort of possibilities of Waterworth is how quickly we can update these models. So I've just gone in and I've taken this scenario with the wastewater treatment plant and I've taken that wastewater treatment plant out. So now we're only looking at capital for the Q and a half uh, improvements. Um, and so you can see again that we're assuming some grant and some borrowing for that project. Um, but the required revenues are still, I've toned them down a little bit, but it still includes a 12% increase this year. Uh, if we narrow, if we bring that down, um, you can see your cash sort of stays low and tends to sort of fall a little bit. Um, so whether we do 12% increases to cover the possibility of those wastewater treatment plant expenses, um, or whether none of that even happens, you can see that the cash still is just kind of getting to a healthy position uh, if you do it this year and then 3% each year. But um, of course, if you wanted to revisit these numbers, we can do that um, later on. But I will quickly go into the water presentation. Um, so this one's I think just before you start on that, Naya, yep. yeah, the, the only thing I want to say to, to touch on is that um, it's really it's really important and anybody who's making key decisions for the community based on this, uh, there's a lot of things that we don't know. And the farther you look into the future, the blurrier it gets. And so as Naya's kind of pointing out in this model here, the the important thing is that based on what we know and based on what we don't know, it's looking as if some sort of rate adjustment is is going to be required, um, whether it's a big one or a little one. But what you can do today, if you make an adjustment sooner than later, it allows that future adjustment to be less. So if you decide, well, we don't know what this is going to be, so let's do nothing for now that could be meaning okay now you're looking at 20 and 30 percent rate increases when we look at this again next time so it's just yeah. important uh, to you know you're in a difficult position to have to make decisions based on things that you don't know but we're just trying to get the best picture we can given what we do know so yeah and basically so that includes sort of what Calvin was saying if you do a, a slightly higher increase um but knowing sort of that you probably will have those expenses for the uh, wastewater treatment plant improvements um, versus if you don't do a higher increase and your cash sort of stays a little bit lower and then a couple years from now you realize this is actually what our expenses look like and we do have 40 million dollars worth if you had only done three percent every year you would have to do a much larger corrective measure in the future more than 20%, maybe 30%, and then 5% each year. So you can see how a smaller adjustment now can prevent this requirement in a couple of years. And that's kind of visually just what Calvin was explaining. So I'll set these back to 12. Oh, I think this was three. Okay, there we go. And I will bring us to the water side. So we've got, again, same thing here, um, historic data and then projections based on 3% inflation. Uh, and then we have a very large um, capital expense for the well field improvements and the well storage being 280 million about and about 62 million for the well storage. So with all of that, we have a bunch of proposed debt service as well because we'll be taking out um, a lot of that is covered by grants in this scenario. It's 80% grant funding, 20% borrowing, which is what um, those are numbers that Ashley gave me based on the current year. Uh, so we can see all of our expenses moving forward. And then these are our current revenues. Again, all of these blue bars are grants. The pinky red ones at the top are loans. Um, and the orange and yellow at the bottom are your regular sale of water service, as well as other sort of non-operating and other operating revenues. 
And you can see that even with all of those borrowings and all of those grants, our revenues are not going to be quite high enough to reach the expenses in the later years, which causes our cash position to drop drastically like that. And we can see all of that layered together. So what we've done for the water side is slightly different. Um, because you're going to need a significant increase in rates, we've gone and we've done them separately. Um, and we've separated, so we've separated out residential, commercial, school, industrial, and then the Roosevelt co-op. And we've separated those out individually and done their own sort of increases um, based on an equitability chart that I will show you in a minute that basically says the industrial rates have been quite a bit lower than um, at least the industrial revenues are not creating as much revenue as they are using water. Uh, so what we've done is we've just gone and taken these are your current rates and we've increased residential, apartment, commercial, schools, um, and the industrial and the co-op at these percentages. Um, and these are what those percentage, these are what those rates are and the dollar amounts for what they would be after these increases. And this is the sheet that I was just speaking about with the equitability. What you're looking at here is the darker medium colored blue here is the water consumption for each customer category. So you can see that the industrial customer category is using more water than the amount of revenue that they're contributing, which is this navy blue or black column. Um, and the, um, the schools are using less and they're contributing more. So basically what we're trying to do, and we can't fix this all in one year because that would be very drastic changes, is just to try and get them more even um, for what we can do in the current year and that brings us to our new rate structure which is showed by the lightest blue here so you can see that these lines are slightly more even and these lines are slightly they're making their way to the right position um, and with this proposed solution um, and then four percent annual increases you'll have the revenue required to pay for all of this capital as well as your operating expenses and the debt that comes along with this capital Earlier, you had mentioned a 12%, 12%, and 3% increase. Could you? That was, yeah, that was for the wastewater side. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. And then, so I can do a little recap here. So for our, this is our water side. We've got the new rates in effect, hopefully in January, um, being these most of your bills will fall under residential and commercial, which are 10% increases. Our wastewater side is the 12% increases annually. And then the solid waste, sorry, this is my mistake. You just asked me. The solid waste is the one that has 12% increases um, for two years and then a 3% increase annually. Uh, repeat the wastewater increase annually. 12%. Okay. Now, can I ask you a quick question on? Of course. The, I think it may be a couple of slides down on the current and proposed equitability. Yes. When we're looking at the uh, industrial user versus the water co-op. It looks like you, and I, I think you said uh, the industrial user is not paying their fair share. Essentially, They're, they have a ratio of less than one. At one, and you want to get everybody to a one. I understand that, but it appears that. The water co-op is being overbilled, and so the proposed revenue contribution would be a reduction. Is that what I'm seeing there? It isn't a reduction, although we can see what those rates would look like. Um, it's just increasing lower than the rest of them. So what we want to do is we want to increase everybody's rates. But at the co-op, we want to increase them ever so slightly and increase the industrial quite a bit higher and that sort of levels it out. So here you can see previously, the industrial customers were using 28% of the water, contributing only 25% of the revenue. 
um, and the co-op was using 21% of the revenue and contributing 22%, or sorry, using 21% um, percent of the water and contributing 22 or 23, if you round up, percent of the revenues um, versus yeah. what our, the lighter blue color, bringing this from 28 versus 25 to 28 versus 27 and a half. Um, and the co-op being 21.7 versus 21.2. Okay, so we just allocated these based on revenues, not based on actual costs associated with each rate class. Because I, I would assume you would be uh, allocating based on cost, um, not just revenue. Is that not a fair assumption? You could. You could do a full cost of service analysis and allocate all your costs to to your different customer categories or, or in any different way. This is basically just doing an analysis of your current rates. So your, your analysis of the equitability of your current rates based on your different customer categories usage versus their amount of revenue. So this is just sort of a, a separate way of looking at it, a separate analysis. I guess I'm confused as, I, I was under the assumption that when you're determining the rate, the revenue requirements, those are based on costs. So you have to have those built in there somewhere, don't you? We and can't, so no, currently we don't have, yeah, so currently we haven't gone through the process of doing a full cost of service analysis. Right now, this is just a, just a, a revenue recovery analysis of saying, okay, these are the revenues we need to recover. And then these are the revenues we are recovering and then looking at it from from a different direction at what the equitability is of those. Okay. Uh, when we last met with Ashley, we very briefly went into the sort of pre-stages of doing your cost of service analysis. Um, but we wanted to have this presentation ready for today. Um, but that is something that we have talked about. Um, and we can talk about that again if we want to sort of set another workshop meeting um, or if any of you would be interested in joining one of our more casual sort of non-boardroom um, meetings, <laughs> you're always invited to hop into those, uh, although not required because I know that you're all very busy as well. Um, I may just take you up on that. Hmm. All right. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah, I don't have any of your emails, so if you want to let Ashley know, um, well, I guess, I think she's on Zoom right now as well, but uh, she can invite anybody as well. Okay, do you, do you folks have anything else, or does that wrap up the presentation? That's all I have, um, and I also sent all of these slide decks to Ashley and Joe, um, so if you would like to go over them in your own time, uh, those are are or can be made available to you um, yeah. from Ashley. Yeah, I think I think we're looking at them. Yeah, I think yes. you have them. on paper. Yes. Okay, perfect. Yes. 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 All right. We sure do appreciate it. Thank you, folks. Yeah. Thank all right, you thanks, all. Sarah. Bye bye. Thank you, Thank you Calvin. You're Speak welcome. to you all soon. Yeah. Bye bye. Okay. So, Kelly. Trees and shrubs. This is kind of a continuation of the last time I saw you guys. Um, we've been looking at how we handle nuisance vegetation pretty much. So um, during the last council meeting that um, I was sick for, one of the things that came up in the session was property owners being responsible relatively from the middle of the road to the middle of the park. Uh, so I put two in front of you. You can see on uh, in trees and shrubs, it does say middle of the road, middle of the alley. And then our lawful accumulation of tracks, it's middle of the alley to the curb. So it was kind of requested we look at and to see some other options on how to do vegetation. Uh, I brought you guys a couple of meetings ago um, on maybe seeing if we have any idea how to change how we do it. We really couldn't come up with any good ideas. And so then this one is just adding to that to see if you guys would recommend that the city take back responsibility um, or move uh, that. Uh, take, take responsibility for alley cleanup 
and pretty much their property to that um, five foot easement. Uh, we did speak to Steve, who wasn't uh, was able to be here. He said if we want to do that, where we cleaned, you know, the minimum of five feet from every property in all alleys, I would be about a six to eight minute crew that would work full time. Uh, so if that was something we, we kind of wanted to start working with, my recommendation would be, of course, not to change this until we actually have that infrastructure in place. So, I know that one of the, the topics during the last council meeting was related to a house that was in, in the county. It was not in the city limits, but our easement should still cover into the county, I would assume. Uh, I remember it's probably been three or four meetings ago when we were changing the lot line for somebody because the city's easement actually encroaches into our into the curb five, six feet, I would assume. Um, and I would think that would cover at least for the nuisance vegetation in the streets blocking the roadway um but for the the alley I, yeah i wouldn't change that thing make us make us responsible for it including the burn alleys but yeah uh, absolutely but is that your understanding for the easement we it does go past the curve to where we would have the ability even in the county we, to uh, those? for our easements if we would have to change it uh because we do specify the property owner has that responsibility so the way we have it now if that section needs mowed, it is the property owner's responsibility. We have to follow the two weeks to give a heads up. Uh, if we want to change that, we have to change it ordinance wise. I'm not sure how. Um, we do it for some people, not for others. And others have to pay to have that done while we go and do other people's that kind of messes with your anti donation lobby. Seems like we're going to do all or none or start a finding service to find them a little faster on those instances. Good. So how do you do it for the, like you were speaking, where you got an alley that butts up with the county? How do you force that county person to take care of that property? That, um, I'm on both sides of that issue. Yeah. I think he was the one that was leading that discussion last week. But okay. I, Steve, he, he, he was. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He was, and I guess it's he was gonna he was gonna reach out. I don't know who's gonna reach out to though. But uh, again, we only have a six man streets crew. Period. Right. Exactly. So for us to start mowing people's lawns is is a lot to ask. Something else we'll we'll get. We'll just fall by the wayside. So there's there's a lot there there's a it's a delicate balance of trying to make sure that the homeowner takes care of their property. And that we also keep the city, you know, up kept basically. So how do we encourage community to do that and not also overtax the streets department as far as, you know, cleaning up the street and, and, and weeds. And we do look to see how some other cities do it. It's pretty frequent to ours. Um, can go to Waterville. If not, goes to a moon. Uh, the only other option we really saw was some take them to the municipal court for a finding system. Pros on that is the court scares people. Cons on that is the judge chooses not to enforce a fine, then there's really not much the city can do. Um, we have just paid on that aspect. What are paid lawyers fees at that point? Right. What about uh, um, motor vehicle and license? I know that on some in some places they can attach basically a lien to a, a license. If you've got this stuff out here that you're not taking care of, they can suspend or, or refuse to renew a license. That's a legal I, question. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, 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 I, I know, yeah. but it Come on, listen, I got know that. I just, okay. Okay. No, and, and uh, you know, I, I threw it out there so that the question could be asked to legal. Um yeah. Uh, we still probably have to put a lease somewhere there because we have the same with the water bill. A lot of our properties are abandoned. They don't have water. They probably wouldn't have a, a license attached to them. Uh, but of course, we don't get our money back on the liens. So we well, and that was my issue with that one house on University of Maine, paying somebody fifteen hundred bucks. Sixteen hundred. Yeah, sixteen hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. uh, Down in a dollar. It was already foreclosed on like twice. The bank, we're never, even if you put a lien, we're not getting our money back on that. Needs more again. It does. I did drive today and I was like, oh no. Surely, though, on something like that, we can change the ordinance to where we can assign the responsibility to a, a volunteer group that likes to clean up the parks. Maybe. They, 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 <laughs> and, and maybe, but 
I would assume there's a way that we can get around to the paying somebody sixteen hundred dollars. Absolutely. I, I do have a question on that particular one because it's zero escape, right? Is yes. there is yeah. there something so that's yeah. well? I mean, it could all be zero escape by the time my idea is done. Um, if we go in and, and use some ground killer, let's quit going back to it. Let's let's hit it with. I, and I don't know where we're going to be with chemical being sprayed. That would also have to be a probably a contractor because I don't think that. Well, I know a good one in town that'll take care of it. That actually, well, I'm not going to say anymore, but um, that can spray that. You know, but uh, I mean, it'll keep us from having to go back. We spent sixteen hundred dollars a month ago, and now it's growing up again. Yeah. You know, I mean, <clears throat> it, it all it all really just comes back to money in in the, in the grand scheme of things. Yes. And, the, the, not having the bodies to do the work that we need to do. So that's true. Um, unfortunately, when we went out for an RFP on on the contractor or or whoever for for cutting lawns, there was one one response. So we don't have a choice after that. Whatever they want to charge, they they whatever get. they want to charge, and we can only do so many lawns be able to yeah. based off of our budget. So, Can't do very many at that price. So, so I got a couple of suggestions if this is the time is okay. One halfway into the alley versus halfway into the street. One ordinance or resolution says one thing and one says up to the curbside, which is confusing. I, I would definitely say that residents have no business being halfway out into the street and I think that should be a city responsibility. And that that's just an opinion. Uh, let the city take care of the street and, and let the residents kick in on the alley and, and what might be the uh, consideration is you mentioned that the, there would be a, several crew members required for the city to take over the alley, but maybe a far more condensed crew to help the residents keep the alley clean by having some way to pick up things that ordinarily sit there for six months, like dressers and mattresses and things like that. So kind of meet halfway in the middle. You talked about how could you get citizens to, to step up the game and take care of the alley. I think by assisting them, they would be more inclined to, to take the responsibility for it. I, I would agree. And, and and our alleys, either way you look at it, add two people instead of five or six, and our alleys are all going to start looking a lot better. So that's just throwing that out there. I have one more suggestion to add on to that. Can we look into, um, gosh, I don't want to use the wrong terminology here, but uh, we've got a lot of inmates in the detention center. I well, I'm. I mean, we got we a lot. Of, we got a lot of about that, but that is a lot of inmates and a lot of work that needs to be done. And maybe, uh, maybe we can strike some kind of a uh, deal with Roosevelt County. I'm sure legal. I'm sure, but um, to if we could look into something like that as a uh, as a means of uh, of an alternate labor force for some of this stuff that I agree. is putting a bind on on the citizens. Yeah, like, give it a know. give a day. For a day's worth of work. I don't know many people that wouldn't uh, want to kick in a day's work to get out an extra day. I think it, you know, I think it could serve several purposes. But I'm sure there's a red tape somewhere. That, yeah, I'm sure there is. Uh, just, uh, made the joke that it might be hire, uh, cheaper to hire our own bail, uh, jailman to watch them than maybe to hire all the, the crews to clean. So, I mean. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. yeah. Um, I can get with the county manager on that. And, and nonviolence, of course. That. <laughs> um, we did clean up six alleys this last month, so it's, it's, it's not something that we don't do. It's just something that is a lot of as it. there's a, just a if if you if you go with everything that they do in a month. It's, well, you guys not enough hours in the day. Yeah, you guys have done a lot of things in the last month. And yeah, it's, it's yeah. being noticed. Just Very much. FYI, it right. is being noticed. So we're working on anything. Go ahead. And then I'll run back to y'all for a recommendation. Uh, only because that used to happen. Because. Well, yeah. What? The, what the inmates oh, being able to. Yeah. Well, I'm all for it. Yeah, I just need to know how to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Cap Max Okay, thank, thank you, Captain. Kelly. Uh, so real quick on the did you cover, that's what you covered here. Yeah. Okay. Hey, one second, I'm just Mr. Mr. Moyer because he's got to leave in five minutes. Did, did you have anything that you needed to comment on or? No, my my big thing is just trying to figure out trees and shrubs and weeds and and how we can. With, with the manpower we have and the money we have, we're trying to we're, we're trying to think out outside the box. Absolutely, um, and I think trying to figure out how to how to hold um, residents accountable for their properties is yes. is something that's I won't say futile, but but difficult. So uh, we're we're trying to look at all options, and I will get with the county manager and see what uh, what. Well, we can work out and see if we can get some uh, crews in here. Well, you know, Preston made mention of it, but also put put a side category over there for volunteer groups as well. Because I know people, Correct. you know, uh, I'm sure you don't want me operating a backhoe or something, but uh, I'm not. <laughs> and before you do jump off uh, and... You sped up before I could make any comments yes. on the presentation. Yes. Uh, you know, I, I just don't know that I enjoy mm -hmm. these Waterworth presentations when these numbers that we have are, are pretty fairy tale. We're not going to spend $280 million in our wealth uh, in the next, I think they have 15 years. That, that will never happen. Right. Uh, because that's, I think the the eighty twenty split was still fifty six million dollars that we would have to internally pay. We're never getting. It. Uh, so why would we have a discussion on rates of something that's never going to happen? Why would we increase our rates to something that we're never going to do? The reason I jumped <laughs> off is because there is a, I think, uh, I think there's a ton of things that were brought up in that presentation that we need to talk okay. about. I wanted to get him because he's leaving in the okay. minutes, So I wanted to at least let him hear. Yeah. So, no, I, under I understand. And uh, I'd have to give it to Ashley more than she's raising up now. This was started well before you. Well, yeah. well before, before me. And and I think um, what they're just trying to, what I, what I see out of this presentation is just basically being able to cover fixing our infrastructure and maybe the numbers are a little inflated or whatnot, but they are tailorable pretty easily in their system. And then uh, the next phase with them is the rate, rate analysis that we can do with them. So, and they have a lot of our numbers already, so it should be hopefully a little bit easier. I would recommend getting, getting Liliana involved with this if she's not already. Uh, she's the, the numbers person and the budget person, the expense side of it. We, our rates just need to cover our water expenses. If if we're using our rates to push to other departments, I don't know that that's no. And I understand can I, that. Can I say something? Yeah, go ahead. Absolutely. Uh, the The only thing that our rates are going to be covering is our uh, expenses. It's not anything else. So whatever each department, which the water department, well filled, solid waste, is going to be utilizing it comes from the percentages that we are increasing to it's not because of our PERs it's not because of the well filled or anything like that is just to be utilized for our um, expenses operating expenses is what it's covering right and I understand that acid but what I'm saying is that during the during the course of the year we have budget adjustments where we move revenues from the water fund to other funds we right see and yes, and yeah, I've uh, Chris and I have both uh, got with Liliana on that as well in regards to that. And that is not actually going to be happening. The only the only moves that will be made, uh, what Liliana is is working for is is our insurance premiums have to come mm -hmm. out of the general fund, or they come out of the general fund. So any insurance premiums for the water infrastructure will come out of their budget in the general fund to pay those premiums. Um, and talking to Liliana the other day. With depreciation, or even without depreciation, we were negative last year with water. We were negative fifty three thousand dollars. So we didn't make any money. So when you don't make any money, and you can't you can't improve anything. So we're working on that. We're working to get them to be sustainable on their own with no money moving to the general fund. 
or anything. So that is well, a huge thing that she is undertaking. But in the past, we did move money Correct. from the water. So our, our past expenses that we're looking at are to cover transfers out to other funds. I mean, I, that, that's just what's happening. That's the reality of it. Right. And I'm I'm with you. I don't think we need to be doing that. Other other funds need to be uh, have their own source of funding, and it should not be subsidized by water. That's and, all. That's yeah. All right. Doing. And and that's and that's exactly where Liliana is 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 rolling with our with it right now. So. But that's uh, also why we have the future stuff, as well as the past that goes into Waterworth, and we're not just looking at the past. We're also looking at the future. Yeah, I think I think that we are. I think we we cover our expenses and everything, but I don't think we, in the past, I don't think we have planned for improvements like we needed to. And unfortunately that isn't bringing about. Yeah, no, I agree with that, growth. but I just don't think we're going to be having $280 million of improvement. No, that would be nice though. Uh, Half of it would be nice. To, maybe to you, but not to me and, and having to pay water rate. Well, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> True. <laughs> That's all I have to say. Sorry. No, you're good. You're good. I, I and and I don't have a great deal more to say to this, but but I still wanted. I guess I wanted to reserve it for another conversation about this packet. But I could say it right here and get it over with. Is forty million dollars on that wastewater treatment plant? We might as well set our hair on fire before we go to the public and tell them that we are going to have to spend 40 million bucks on a plant that has already cost us almost 30 million to make it work. I, I realize it is the past. I realize that it's screwed up and it's going to cost money to fix, but I'm going to be standing behind somebody that says that to the general public. Absolutely. I'm not going to stand out in front of that. That's, that is just, I don't need to explain it. <laughs> well, that didn't get a fly. It just well, didn't like get a fly. Said, it was a projection. Okay. And the numbers can be adjusted right. as more reports come in. Okay. And as more analysis is done with everything and our plans and our PERs are completed, then um, we can very easily adjust those. And a lot of times we, well, not a lot of times, we actually, we were looking at that amendment also with the 12%. And so that had it going across the board for 12%. Okay. And that's so that another issue. So much of an, a new thing that was planned right. previously. I'm definitely glad to get it on paper that someone is estimating that that's how messed up that plan is, that it needs $40 million to be fixed if that's the projection. But by the same token, we're... Talk, we're talking about people that are paying $22 a month, not getting, in essence, what they're paying for. And now we're telling them that we're going to raise that by 12%, then 12%, then 3%. Well, but the 12% has been planned without okay. the $40 million that we talked about. Okay. So that part has been set for a little while. Okay. Um. So that one, that one shouldn't be so new. We just have other numbers to go in with it. Yeah, I think so, they, I think they based the forty million off of the the rate structure that was approved with a twelve percent increase every year. Mm -hmm. They based that you could spend forty million dollars based off of that, and 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 fix the plan. And I don't think the forty million. I mean, I don't think that's a the right number, but mm -hmm. I don't think that's just for the plant either. I think that's for the actual infrastructure mm -hmm. so that we can use that reduced water and and use the plant the way it's supposed to be used. And that's that's some of what I was gonna say is you know, originally it was 27 million and and now we're gonna repair it for 40 million. Uh, I have I mean, no. but this being a public meeting and and people hearing it. Yeah, that's outside. That's a problem I have as well. This, this, <laughs> and that's why these questions need to be asked. And the question or answers that you're giving, Joe, are real important because people are sitting out there going, Oh my gosh, do the math, you know, do do let's just break ground and build a new one. You know, but what you're saying about how this is just an idea at this point and that these right. numbers can be adjusted, and and then also knowing that the whole 40 million is not going just to the plant, because I didn't know that until that was just said. 
uh, that it's also going to infrastructure. That's important, mm -hmm. not just for us to hear, but for anybody that's going to be listening to these and watching these uh, videos. Well, the, the the part that's going to get smacked in our face is that the $27 million originally was to include the infrastructure that we're now talking about spending more money. And not only that, but Redmond uh, suggested in a press release that we probably wouldn't need all of the 27 million. So now we've used all the 27 million plus some extra and talk, we're talking about more money. Yes. Yes, yes. absolutely. Oh, bye. Mr. Moyer. My last piece on that is can't fix that past mistakes. Yep. We can only move forward from here. Um, that stuff wasn't done. We need to do it. It's just, it's just what's needed for that plant. So I'm going to say that I don't think the four, I think the 40 million is, is a big number. I don't think that's a, a, a true number. I think that no, it's an with them basing it off of the 12% rate increase that was already previously approved by, by the council uh, a year or two ago. Uh, 2023. 2023 yeah. rate increase. I think that's what they based it off of. And mm -hmm. they just said, you can use up to $40 million if you wanted to based off of this increase. Gotcha. You can use it how you want to. So, yeah. but that's definitely, we, we need to improve the infrastructure to use the plant the way it's supposed to be. Yep. Bring it up to complaint. Yeah, I think we all agree with that. I, but I think what, what we're trying to get across is now we're on camera and, and somebody's going to take a snippet of, hey, they said we're going to spend another $40 million on the wastewater treatment plant. Even, yep. even though we had this discussion afterwards saying, no, we're not. Yeah. <laughs> they're going to say now they're, they're spending $40 million there and they're spending two hundred eighty million in the well field. And we're we're all gonna I understand. Be okay. strong now. So no, I get it. Just just some thoughts. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Yep. Thank you. We have a last section uh, that is EPCOR on here. What is that? I don't know. I'm assuming it's a, a, a continued discussion from the water meeting yesterday. Okay. But I, I don't believe you were here for that discussion. I was not. Do you have, I'd like your opinion on it. How, how are things going with that core? Uh, are, is it on the up and up? Do we enjoy working with those guys? Do they really know what they're talking about? Or is it a waste of time? So, I mean, EPCOR has their own, um, they've got their team. They've got their, they've got a lot of things that we don't have as a, as a public entity. Or yeah, public entity. Um, they've got resources that are that are beyond us. Um, their their information that they've given us um, throughout their their throughout the time that I've dealt with them um, has been pretty humbling as far as you know talking uh, talking field work with the guys and stuff like that. Um, I it's just a kind of a back and forth with. Uh, questions i think they're moving towards um gaining some asset management stuff asking for pensions stuff numbers like that um so it's just uh going to depend on us gathering that information and get, getting it over to them i know they're asking to do a workshop on either the 22nd or the 23rd um i think they asked uh miller mike miller um i don't know if he got back with them i was cc'd in the email but i'm not sure if i'll call that mr moyer Mentioned that yesterday. Yeah. That, I'm not, I'm not was, sure if they thought it was scheduled for the 23rd or 23rd. So, so 22nd, 23rd. 23rd. Um, but I mean, they, they've got a lot of resources that, that we could utilize. Um, if, I mean, if, if you're asking for my opinion, I mean, we're, we're, we're boots on the ground. We're doing the work. We're doing the best we can. And of course, EPCOR would tell you the same thing. We don't have enough operators mm -hmm. to operate the, the systems that we got so and and it's not just a warm body that we would need it's it's true certified operators that we yeah. need to run the expertise to do. yeah to, to operate the plant to to make the decisions that we need to make and stuff like that so yeah. um and that of course that takes time to do you know you you can't just bring somebody in and send them to school right away you have to have a years of experience to even just send them to to go get their one uh, two years experience to get a two and and that you know that plant you need a three or a four operate a system so it's just how, it's many, some, how many open positions do you have sorry i didn't mean to right now um on paper i only have one open position one for open water. position yeah. that's not filled that's not filled okay yeah. Thank and you. it's it just recently became open and you, you mentioned that being on paper but in reality you need more than that don't you and right. yes absolutely. okay what would you say 
Um, if we were gonna, if we were gonna get down into it and do detailed, we'd have to go off a of population base, uh, you know, a, amount of size of the city, size of the, city the, yeah. the, the, yeah, all that would have to play a factor. You know, the fact that we have a well filled with 47 wells in it and mm -hmm. one guy going out there, guy, which is I mean, you just do a, do a couple numbers on that and, you Half know, a dozen more? probably six guys that we need out there, you know, uh, okay. Tom, Tom, but in somewhat quickly on you, uh, you said you need an op an equipment operator three, four, we say that again, you so, need four to run the system. I don't know what you said. So for the wastewater treatment plant, it's, it's a aero mod, fully, full, fully aeration, uh, activated sludge is in the plant. Um, so that calls for a level four operator and that's wastewater supply operator for So they have, you would need a lab tech operator to, to run your lab. And then you need, uh, a, a level four operator out there to oversee and make the decisions that, that need to be made on, on that, on that level. Do um, we have that? Yes. Randall Poe is, is a level, oh, four. level four. He's a level four wastewater and a level three water operator. I didn't um, realize that. So so to make the decision or so to to be able to communicate with the state and and have have that relationship with the state, you have to have a three or a four. So right. which we have that within the city of Portales. We need to start getting um, the people that's been here uh, up there with our with our levels. Uh, Jay just recently went and passed her two yesterday. So she's awesome. we got another two. Um, he's a two water. Um, he's going to go take his. Uh, wastewater one hopefully here in the near future i'm set up to go take my three here in the near future and then we've got a few others that that are they just need a schedule on their test but it just it's all we, we have to go get certified um on the state level which is what i just went to in albuquerque we went to go get uh credit hours and you have to have so many credit hours per test and then you have to have so many credit hours per year to recertify that within a three-year period um but it's just it's just depending on going to get those sort of or credit certs and then taking your test and it's computer-based testing. So, but you just go take the test, get certified, and then, and then you just hold on to that certification for however long you pay for it. So, so in a conversation that was not with me, but with a, a friend of mine that later had a conversation with me, the lady that came down, Jerry Pohl from the office of the state engineer told her that we needed a level five, operator at that wastewater treatment plant is that in conflict with what you know no there's not it it, it stops at four i okay. mean there's there's certifications out there for all kinds of different things you got distribution lab tech a okay. sample um but as far as i know it it stops at four okay um you can be you can be a double four and that's i think the highest you can go for okay. water and wastewater all right and if i'm a I think Epcor has four level four operators in Clovis. Yeah. So that's what. Uh, yeah. Daniel? No, oh, the guy from Clovis. Mark. 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 Okay. Is there anything else about uh, Epcor that, that we, we wanted to say? We did discuss safety yesterday in your absence and uh data collection mm -hmm. and uh mr moyer assured us that those are on the forefront of his mind yep. is making that a safe environment to work in and <laughs> get data get make the data collection better in the city of portales regardless of who's running the water you guys need better data Epcor, or if they run it, they need better data. So, yeah. At any rate, I hope that takes. No. And just on the safety side, since y'all weren't here yesterday, uh, Eric had, had uh, told Chris that we'd love to help on the the electrical side of it. I think there were some some panels that uh, maybe needed some attention. If there's anything we can do at the co-op, please reach out to us. We would love to help on that. Uh, top our our assistance there. Beyond that, we can't do much. Right. Away. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Christine, do you have a? You want to set the date for the next meeting? 
or you can the 29th you want to go for. Okay. Let's go ahead and go two weeks. I would prefer not to. I'd rather do it at 9 a.m. like the water group if it's if it's not a problem. Why did we change it to one? Oscar came in my office and requested it. <laughs> Thank you. Let's go to that. <laughs> Is that for a bus schedule or personal? Okay. Not inquire. That's fine. That's fine. I was just curious. Chair. Let's go nine o'clock. Yep. I'll send it out. Okay. And uh, is there anybody that has any comments from y'all? Any other comments? Okay. Good. 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 I'm good. We have a motion to dismiss or so good. Okay. Second. Okay. We're done. Thank you.